Hey everyone, Jason here. Uh, today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6 that was originally sent here for no power and I wound up discovering that it was bottom left hole long screw damage and since then have fixed it. Now, uh, since this thing is back up and running, I've also found that Wi-Fi is not working and I'm going to show you how it is that I fixed that. I've sort of underestimated the depth of the wound on this one. Let's have a look at this thing. Let's get our DC power supply on the screen. And then also let's turn this thing on so that you can see what the phone looks like. We're going to turn on the supply and let's boot this up. Now, while this phone boots up, I want to take just a minute to talk about frenemies. This is a term that many of you are most likely familiar with. A frenemy is this little closet hater. They, they lurk in the shadows and they may be on your Facebook friends list or, or in your life somewhere where they can kind of keep tabs on you but not really have to deal with you or talk to you. And they think they're being sneaky but they're pretty easy to pick out because these are the people that you hardly ever hear from. They only seem to speak up whenever they have some little tidbit of of advice or information or something to offer that could only possibly help make you feel worse about something that would otherwise be really, really, really positive. Here's why you never hear from them, because they would rather otherwise not talk to you at all, but sometimes their jealousy runs so thick that they have to speak up whenever something is just, they have to try to bring you down. They, they can't stand it anymore. Some of the things that they say that would bring you down are worded in such a way to where you actually have to wonder, is that person being, are they being a dickhead? Like you don't really know. It's like, is that person, are they being an asshole? That's typically the way your frenemies come off because they're really good about staying in your life and trying to bring you down. Now, they're not trying to bring you down because you're doing something wrong. They feel the need to try to bring you down because you're doing everything right. So if you realize the reason why this person is trying to bring you down is because you're doing so well, well then their negativity actually turns into compliments. You know, they, they want to say something that tries to make you feel like a jerk or tries to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. But when you realize they're doing that because you're doing really, really, really well, well then you're able to take their negative nasty, nasty energy and turn it into a positive boost to where Every time they think they're going to bring you down, they're doing nothing but putting you higher and higher and higher up on a pedestal. So for all your haters, for all your frenemies, just remember, your haters are going to be your best motivators. Let's continue with this. So now we've got this phone booted up. Uh, let's see. It is currently drawing, oh, about 10 milliamps of power. So that's I'd say that's an acceptable sleeping load. I'm going to power the screen on here and unlock it. We have working touch ID because it vibrated at my glove. Fine. Unlock it. I'm going to open up settings. Okay. Well, uh, whenever I first looked at this, I was able to get to the Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi was grayed out. Bluetooth worked, but Wi-Fi did not. Now what this phone is doing is it's actually opening up settings. It hangs on the screen for a minute and then it crashes. I can say I, I enabled Bluetooth and then I disabled Bluetooth, but now the settings screen is crashing. All right, so I've seen this thing with grayed out Wi-Fi. I have to wonder if this glitch that I'm having here with this thing opening up settings has anything to do with the repair that I'm about to do. Uh, so I'm actually, I am actually gonna go ahead and proceed with this repair. I'm gonna try this one more time and then I'm gonna to slide to power off. Come to think of it, right after I did the initial repair on this, I did see it hang like this once, but it opened up the next time. And yeah, it's gonna crash again. So this thing hangs on settings and then drops back to drops it drops back out. It crashes. So let's go ahead and slide to power off. I'm gonna do the same repair that I was planning to do anyways, because I did see this thing start up with no Wi-Fi. I'm not 100% sure what all the traces that I'm about to get into are responsible for. So uh, it's possible that I've got something shorted out or some, there's something goofy wrong because I seen every feature on this phone work except for Wi-Fi. I tested it thoroughly. So uh, hmm. I know what it is. It's because I pressed record on a camera. That's why it is. All right, so let's get this thing unhooked. DC power is off. And... 
I wonder if it has anything to do with running it on supply, because the last time I tested it, it did have a battery. Huh. All right, let's keep moving. We're going to disconnect this thing from my housing. I just wonder if there's something shorted inside the screw hole that's causing that. Notice I still put the active tools that I'm using out on the table. I try to keep stuff from piling up on my bench. It's just when you get this much of a workflow, this much of a workload, it, it's really, really, really difficult to cope with things being out of whack. And you'll notice also I did, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm not going to move things around. About all I did to get rid of my cords clashing problem here was I moved my soldering irons to the right and I moved my power supply to the left a little bit. So uh, let's get right under the microscope and have a look at this thing. So on a lot of the iPhone 6, no image phones, what I wind up with is a, uh, you know, it either winds up being a broken LCM reset line here. Let's swap blades because this is not going to work. Wrong blades. So on these long screw damaged iPhone 6s, what I typically wind up in, running into is all of these traces being broken, but the ones that are responsible for image wind up being um, our chestnut enable trace here and our LCM reset trace over here. And I will say that the LCM reset, why ain't this X-Acto blade pointy? Did I pull one right out that was broken? Huh. So, no, that's because it's one of those Z blades. Ah, oh well, we'll just use it. So, a lot of times you can get away with just jumpering LCM reset. I think this one here, I did a, a solder bridge over here. I didn't put a wire in place because it was just barely cracked. This one, I think primarily no image was due to chestnut enable being broken here. But sometimes you'll do this repair and you still get no image and it's because LCM reset comes loose down inside the board. And on those, I wind up digging back here just a little bit and I dig down and I get a hold of the trace down and I think it's like on the third layer or something but uh, it's still a very robust repair and I have been fixing those with the LCM reset torn loose down deep. I think what we're getting into here is that a lot of these iPhone 6 boards that have been long screw damaged I strip them all the way out to the edge here because they're noticeably pulled up. This one here isn't that spongy over here it seems okay so I didn't take it any farther and I think what's happened is we've got traces down inside this area here because if you look, it is a little spongy. And I think we've got traces broken down inside of here. I was absolutely certain whenever this was just a Wi-Fi issue, but now that it's hanging up on settings, that, that makes me concerned. How far out are we going to go here? Man, there's just, there's just no sponge out here at all. So I'm going to start by stripping off this layer of ground plane right here. Well, that came off pretty easy, right? All right, let's go all the way out to the edge. Okay. I'm going to be really careful because if I don't, you know, I don't want to run more traces than I need to. And also I want to be really careful not to leave these metal flakes of copper up under the shield. I actually did this whole repair with the shield off. And then I had to wait on the customer's passcode. And now I'm doing no Wi-Fi because it has no Wi-Fi.
You know, I've only done a few out this far, but I know these traces are here. And I've had to reconnect them before. I think they're actually under this next ground layer. I have to pull this next ground layer off. I might have just cut them both. My blade popped right through that ground layer really easy. So we're going to peel up this layer. Try to do it without pulling it up. Try to like fillet it up rather than pulling it up. Because I really want to do as little work here as possible. Now right down in here we should have some more traces. Lay this part off. Yeah, you all have heard me mouth quite a bit about long screw damage repair. And a large reason for that has been that LCM reset, reset line. I beat my head against the wall trying to figure out what I was missing. It's like this damn thing still don't get an image. Alright, so we're coming up on our third layer here. Are we still in focus? Can you see this? Let's get some alcohol in this so you might be able to see it a little better. Doesn't look that bad. Let's really try to look here and see what was spongy. Let's go back a little farther right here. Really need a lot of light to record at this magnification. Right now I'm looking for visible breaks. Now these things are normally really obvious. The boards pull apart and they take chunks of the substrate with them so you can see where the big chunks are missing and it's not that difficult. But this here is challenging because I don't see... Oops, I don't see anything bad enough. Nothing's coming apart. Normally these pieces come up like this and you'll have chunks that come out with them. But so far that ground is just peeling right up off of there and I don't want to screw up what the repair I've already done because all that tests out is working.
And now that one did rake up really easy just now. That might have been because I raked it. No, I think they're all broke right there. Alright, I think that's going to be where the break was. Boy, it wasn't pulled apart very much. I got one broken there, maybe two. Boy, this blade situation is a pain in my neck. <clears throat> Let's get some alcohol in this so we can try to see what it is we're dealing with. It's possible that I broke that trace. myself which means after I repair it we'll still have no Wi-Fi and it might still lock up in settings sure wish I could remember where my other pack of blades were right now not sure if I'm responsible for this little nick here. If it is even a nick, let's see if we can tell. Now that's where the break is. It's back just a little farther so it looks like we've got this break here, and then we've got this break back here. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing patched up and get it working. I am going to go ahead, I'm going to pull the shield back off of this, hesitantly, because I don't want to float all of my other jumpers. And we're just going to be really careful with our shield removal. I'm going to do, I've been using my hot air a lot cooler than I used to. Well, not a lot. I used to run it at 390C and now I run it 350 most all the time. All right, so we're at 350C. I'm going to grab a hold of the shield and start warming it up. I think I'm going to wind up digging back under the shield. Uh, I'm not sure that one break that you can see that may have been caused by me just now. We'll have to put a jumper there. But I think the actual breaks here are a little bit farther back up under that shield. So we have to dig a little bit farther. And remember, we're not digging on just, you know, we're not up on top of the, uh, under the first ground plane. Well, I guess, okay, we have went through the first ground, the first layer of substrate, and now, gosh, where are we at? I don't even know where I'm at. Okay, let me pull this shield off of here so we can fix these traces. And I'll try not to explain anything else since I'm not doing a very good job of it. Okay, come on. All right, got the shield off. And let's get back to our long screw damage repair. Yeah, it's squishy all the way, but oh yeah, squishy right here. What a mess. All right, so can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to cut this back a little farther now. And I'm going to say right here. All right, so we've got our first ground plane out of the way here, and we're going to chip away here at this substrate. Get a little more of that ground out of the way. Oop. Don't jab your blade in, man. Good God.
We're looking for shit that I didn't break. All right? Well, you know what? That might be our brakes right here. I need to address this other long one here. I think it's going to be okay. Seems to be a pretty big chunk missing out of that one. Somewhat of a break in that one. Honestly, okay, I'm not really sure if I did that or if that came apart, if that was already like that. Sometimes it's really hard to tell with long screw damage. You know, you'll start out with a phone that you know has no image, and then you wind up finding all this other stuff broken. But, uh, all right, so we're going to get in here. We're going to fix these traces. I'm going to fix two of them by the looks of it. I really don't know what those traces are because they are not on ZXW tool. Uh, okay, so let's get us a piece of wire, which, by the way, I am proudly winding down to the end of my little spool of uh, wire here that I harvested some months ago. And this will actually be the first time I've ever used all of one of these because I usually wind up needing to get, as you can tell, look, look at how nasty and dirty it is. It's because it's laying on a piece of adhesive that's laying around all the time but I always wind up replacing my little ear speaker spool because I've lost it it's never because I ran out good stuff you can buy this wire too I just I just prefer to scrounge it this is iPhone 6 ear speaker wire all right cut it off Hopefully I'm not too shaky on camera to do a long screw damage repair. I don't I don't know if I've ever got any of these online or not. I, I may have. I think I did a 6 plus. It was like one jumper or something. This one was actually a little bit of a miserable one to do. Um, I got right through it. I didn't have to do it more than once. And the little frays and stuff you can see are the uh, enamel coating coming off of the wire. Because although this looks like just bare copper wire, it's not. It's got a uh, it's got a coating on it. So okay, we're gonna tack that one there just about like that. So let's go ahead and get some flux on this. Some fliggity fluxy. You thought I was gonna say it, didn't you? Google algorithm. I didn't. Flag me for not being suitable for advertising. All right, get down here. I have grown to have great respect for Google and I tell you what normally I'm not very happy to get a 1099 in the mail but this year I got a 1099 in the mail from Google and it made me feel important all right so we're gonna tack that down there this is really tough but because whenever it's in focus on the screen it's a little out for my eyeballs and it's just far enough out I can't see when that solder's flowed. So let's 
If this is a little out of focus for you, I'm sorry. I'm having to move this around a little bit. We're stuck. Let's go a little farther up. Okay. One jumper. And I'm going to cut that off right down here somewhere. Very carefully. There we go. Oh God, my nerves aren't going to let me do it. Glad I'm not live streaming. I don't know if I can ever be a live streamer. Some of this stuff here lately, life's been at a, a critical point where I really need every repair to count and I uh, really need to just need to keep everything moving or this stuff's just going to pile up on me. So Jitters like this can be a real pain in my neck. And doing this on camera makes this a hundred times worse. And if I was live streaming, I probably would have done lost it by now. Okay. You didn't stick. You sure looked like you stuck. And long screw damage is easy to get into a situation where one little jitter and it restarts the whole entire repair for you. Alright, we're going to go a little farther away with this because I don't want to mess up my first joints. Okay, that's going to be good. If I solder that and you can't even see it. I guess long screw damage is one of the most difficult things I've ever tried to record. Because you have to zoom in so far, there's not enough light for hardly me or you. Every little jitter makes, you know, it's like working in a constant earthquake. Okay, that did not stick. Let's not cut that off yet. Hey, you get to see me solder it anyways. Alright, so let's get that in view. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of fresh flux because I needed this to count. Okay, that is for sure stuck this time. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'll probably post this anyways, but uh, I don't know. My next video won't be a long screw damage repair. Or maybe it will. Seems like every time I say one thing, I have to incur the opposite. Okay. So I didn't burn enough of this coating off for these two to short, but I'm going to nudge it over just a fuzz anyways. Shift quick flux is the worst for doing this, but I still use it. I'm surprised that these traces here are all still okay. And I always try not to dig back too far. I mean, who wants to dig back under the shield for crying out loud? And um, I think that one is connected, but I had a stray piece of solder there that moved. All right, so we have reconnected those two traces. Let's see if that makes any difference whatsoever. And once again, terribly sorry if you can't actually see it. What's the point of recording it if you can't see it, right? Let's do it anyways. All right, so we're going to put this board back in the housing. Actually, for the sake of testing, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the same housing. I'm going to use my test housing. Okay. I'm going to use the customer's screen because it has a home button and right now mine don't. Yes, haters are your best motivators. I didn't come up with that on my own. That came from YouTube. I think it was like Chris Crocker or something. 
All right, so we're going to get the multimeter or the uh, current back on the screen. We are going to turn the power supply on, and then you'll actually see the current being drawn rather than the current that it's set to. We're going to hook this up to our iPhone 6 lead. Look, I've busted out of my glove. And we're going to let the phone boot up, and God help me, I hope this phone still boots. Apple logo. It did make me nervous, you know. If anybody ever changes anything that like randomly adds a half a second to the time it takes to display an Apple logo, they'll probably increase the blood pressure across the entire repair community by like 25 or 30 percent. Well, it's time to readjust and fix my microscope again. It's probably time to clean it too because, I don't know, I would like to be able to zoom in at these magnifications and record clearly, but I don't think I'm going to do it with this resolution of camera. It's just... It's not quite good enough to re record a long screw damage repair, but I think you got sort of the idea of what it was that I dug into and soldered on. Okay, so we've got this phone unlocked. I've just pressed settings. And set oh, I've just pressed settings and settings opens right up with no delay. Now we're going to buzz right over here and we're going to check on Wi-Fi. And before it would not let me turn on Wi-Fi. And now I am able to enable Wi-Fi. Plus, the settings screen didn't lock up. So, you know, ZXW Tool, if you look at ZXW Tool, let's have a look at the iPhone 6 long screw damage. And look, it's got my it's got my hotspot on the list, which US1, that's me. Uh, US1 5G, that's also me. All right, let's switch over to screen capture. And I'm going to show you the long screw damage uh, board view here for iPhone 6. And there'll probably be somebody out there that knows better than me exactly what these traces are. But uh, so the ZXW tool long screw damage board view, it only has this LCM reset line. It's got this AP to ALS, ALS to AP and L line. It's got the brightness changed on that screen. and makes me nervous. Let's turn this off before it reboots or something. It makes me look like a fool. Okay. And then you've got chestnut and Abel. Um, you've got, you know, just these other lines here that deal with the, you know, the flash on the back of the phone. Uh, Oscar, this is going to be for compass and stuff. When you, you know, another strobe line. We've got power for display. You've got another strobe line and you've got um, another line for the light on the back. There's not anything here that would be for Wi-Fi. So if you've used ZXW tool and you've done your repair out here and you come up with a phone that don't have Wi-Fi or apparently one that freezes up loading up the settings, you might want to check out just a little bit farther because there are traces out here that get damaged. And I'm not sure how well this video is going to show exactly where that damage was because I know I was sort of raking on it with the blade whenever I spotted the break. And sometimes you can be raking on it with a blade and rake a trace off and then you don't really know if you caused it or if it was already like that. Now, these things are really, really, really strong, though. When those traces are stuck down, you can clean them off with the blade. You, you can scrape the substrate off of the top of them, and you can clean them off with the blade. And if they just wipe loose, just, pff, just come off, chances are they're already broken and brittle and, and foiled up and cracked up, and that's where the problem is anyway. And that's the way it was with this one. You, can, you won't be able to see it on the video, but there was an area where you could see where it had pulled down into the third layer, and it sort of, that'll give you an indication that it was hooked in real good right there, and when that screw hole pulled up, it pulled all that up too. Now, this one here... I would not have thought that we had damage out that far because it just wasn't that spongy. It didn't seem pulled apart out there. So, um, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I'm going to do some more testing on this thing and um, get this thing insulated and sealed up and get it back to my customers. So, um, I really all thank you all for watching. I do hope you have successful repairs, and I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. Right. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit before I put the phone back together. Yes, no Wi-Fi after a long screw damage repair. Submit that to the Apple forums. Like, help, I chopped into my logic board and I reconnected a bunch of traces and now my Wi-Fi don't work. Can you help? 
I'm almost positive their first suggestion would be to restore the phone. First, try to reboot it and then run a software restore. If that don't work, seek immediate replacement. Okay, we just want to make sure there's no alcohol left down in here. Normally when I do this repair, that part of the board's obviously already loose. I peel it up and I, I mean, I've had to reconnect these traces over here. And I have narrowed that, that down to being Wi-Fi before as well. But normally whenever they're as solid as this one was, I would not have to get down in there and chop that part of the board off. But, there we go. This is looking pretty good. Okay. So there is my somewhat of a gnarly trace repair. My jumpers were much straighter than that before I had to get in and, and chop around on this thing again. And poke and prod and things like that. So we're going to move this one back over a little. Clean my blade off because I just cleaned this thing. There we go. So, as you can see on this board, the long screw damage. Gosh, it's amazing I even get through this with the sort of jitters I have whenever there's a camera running. It's, it's sort of ridiculous. Uh, so I have repaired our LCM reset line with just a little bit of solder. Uh, that might actually have been messed up by me. I have gotten this line here repaired. We did chestnut uh, enable. Uh, these next three lines. Oh. oh, are you serious? All right, did you see what I just did? Look, this video's not over. So now I gotta solder that one back into place. Well, folks, that's gonna be it for this video. And see, that's why I end those videos before putting this shit back together, because because <laughs> sometimes you gotta do this. Now I gotta solder this right in the middle of everything without messing up my prior work. Not lucky for me. I've been doing quite a bit of trace repair, so I'm not near as skeptical as I used to be. That's going to need more flux on it. Just want to make sure the heat from my iron doesn't mess up the trace beside it. And I'm okay if it even sticks on the side a little bit. I'm just looking for a robust solder joint. I don't care what this looks like because I'm going to cap it. And that trace just broke off. All right, so we're going to dig deeper, guys. Luckily, that is just first layer. We're going to dig back a little bit farther and get to that trace. Don't let anybody ever tell you that your job is easy. And here's a case where if I wasn't recording a video, this wouldn't have happened. That's okay, though.
shit, it broke again. Probably the last time I used one of these blades. It's just not pointy enough. Okay, let's see if we can dig this up. Yeah, we can get it here. Okay, so that's going to be it there, but now my wire is not long enough. So we have to redo that wire to fix this. So let me pull my wire off. Just one of them, not the other one. Look, now I've messed up the other one. Oh! So there's that one back where it goes. Now we can sort of pick our poison here. I normally like to begin the wire on the shortest side, like the one that I don't like the trace to break off from. Uh, I'm going to go with this side over here first. So I'm going to begin my wire over here where I don't want to dig back any farther. So let's get us a piece of wire. I'm sure that's long enough, right? The wire is so fragile that just squeezing it with tweezers too hard will cut it. All right, so let's get zoomed in here. And make sure I'm not about to solder this to the ground plane. I don't think I've ever had to dig back that far for this trace. I actually don't even know what this is right now, but since I can see it, I'm gonna connect it and no, that's not ground plane. All right, so I'm going to put just a little bit of a bend on my wire here at the end. And I'm going to use some component here nearby to do it. Oops. Okay, I'm obviously way too shaky to be doing this today. Can't believe this. I was done, and then I had a little bit of a jitter. which caused me to rake and my trace is loose and here I am fixing it so the more you break the more you gotta fix this one was in all fairness this one was in really bad shape All right, let's try not to bridge this with the ground right next to it I'm going to really mess this up if I drag that blade, grab my tweezers across my other traces. All right, so that's down nice and good. I'm a lot better at long screw damage when I'm in my own little comfort zone, when I know nobody's watching me and I don't have any frenemies that are going to try to make me feel bad. So that's where we're going to put it. God, if I pull that off there, I'm going to hate myself. So let's get this lined up and not mess this up. OK. 
Hmm? I go, Mofo. I didn't solder you. I just used that to tin it. We are on, folks. All right, let's cut it off. Time to eat lunch. I cannot believe how jittery I am just because I'm planning on posting this and showing the world what I'm doing. Pretty bad, really. Okay, so this time we're going to clean this up with a Q-tip, and I'm not going to narrate and point it, point at stuff. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see most of this, but I'm planning on clipping this in. Like, you know, everybody thinks the video's over, and then you get to see what I, how I really screwed this up. If they come off just from dabbing them with a Q-tip, it's probably best that you figure it out while you're dabbing it with a Q-tip and not after you've put glue on top of it. Okay, so that actually seems really strong. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop nitpicking at it right there. Okay, and as far as the shield that goes back on this one, we don't want that little ground leg that pokes down in there anymore. Uh, we no longer want that there. Uh, we can either break that off or we can just bend it out, and. Um, This one, we just went ahead and snipped it off. Okay, so the shield will go back on. And because I don't like the way that looks, I'm going to take what I just snipped off. I'm going to bend it over, and I'm going to clamp it down. There we go. So now I'm going to put the shield back on this. careful Just enough heat to melt the solder on that shield. You can't see it on that camera there. Maybe I'll record it a little better sometime. But uh, So right after I've done that, I'm going to swoop right back over with the microscope and I'm going to look at my traces and make sure that everybody's happy. And I'm also going to try to make dang sure...
that that's not soldered to ground. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, but we're going to check it. So I'm going to hook my meter up here. set it to ohms I'm gonna set it screw the meter I'm gonna set it to beep so that you can hear it I'm gonna put one probe on ground and I'm gonna to touch that line with the other end of my probe my other probe And we get nothing. Okay, I'm going to try that in normal resistance mode without the beep because it is more sensitive. Fifty K. I'm not sure if that's the proper reading, so I still have quite a bit of testing to do on this one. But now we've got the shield back on it. My next step is to fully reassemble the phone. I will cut back in and, and show uh, probably just a snapshot because I'm done. I'm, I'm done recording. I mean, I just I do have a camera I can talk to. I, I don't don't have the other camera running, but I just wanted to point out which traces I reconnected. And as you've seen, I wound up doing a little bit of another repair. So I'm moving on. OK, I was just reattaching the screen to this thing and I thought I would show everybody what this winds up looking like if I can, if my camera will focus. So it actually winds up looking pretty good. I've used a couple of different things there. I've used like uh, silicone, I've used Loctite, I've used various different things to cap that off. I, I don't know why, I've just, I've just kind of always done my own thing. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this thing back together. I know why that is, because I learned on my own, and I wasn't taught by anybody, other than a little YouTube here or there, and there was nobody that said, hey, after you're done with your long screw damage, put this exact thing on there, and even if they had, I'm still the type of person that would have went out and found something that would work just as well, and not have to order it, like I, you know, this was the type of thing where I was just getting into micro soldering, and needed something this very day to cover up a repair that I had just done for this person. And it was like, uh, go to the hardware store and find something that'll work. And didn't have time to order it. And then ever since then, it's like, hey, this works pretty good. And I've been doing it like that ever since. So I think the right thing to use there would be like UV adhesive. But when it comes to my long screw damage repairs, that's the way I cap them off. Uh, they don't they're not too hard to get back into if I have to. Uh, it's it's pretty well firm. So that nothing's going to shake loose. I know it doesn't conduct electricity. It's safe from moisture. And that works out pretty good. So this thing is now fully reassembled. Yes, the lone technician over here. I don't know, sometimes it really holds me back a lot where you know I'm not reaching out to the crowd and, and asking questions and stuff, but uh, it's just it's just who I am. Alright, so there we go. Phone is reassembled. We are back up to Apple logo. And I am gonna test the total holy crap out of this thing and make sure everything works which before I put my cap on there I brushed briefly through uh, strobe features flashlight and stuff like that and it passed all that Wi-Fi works so I assume that this one is going to be fine so I thank you for watching have a good day